allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all.
grad with the police department and the fire department alike. There are community activities that go on throughout the city that night, so it's something that you might want to gather the information off of our website and, and attend when you can. Do any other council members have any comments about the city council? Yes. Sorry. Yes, I just want to highlight um, Councilman Sheehan's comment about the fire department. Um, I have the pleasure of the youth output programs um, leaders in training to do with them yesterday. We were able to do 19 blocks here in Brunswick and they picked up um, over 275 pounds of garbage and 135 pounds of, of um, recycling material. The first week, and I think this is very impressive, you know, that our young people are out there. The first week that the program started, they did, um, the first week they picked up 950 pounds of trash and 270 pounds of recycling. And then the second week, they picked up 1,300 pounds of trash and 390 pounds of recycling. Uh, but like I said, I, I spent time with them and uh, both groups. Um, along the way, it, it was very encouraging for the kids for the kids and um, for myself as a resident, somebody who's out there in the community, to see how many community members came up to me to um, say they how great that the program is going. They love seeing the kids being out there, um, being active in the community and taking ownership. So uh, again, congratulations, let's keep it up. And, uh, and I hope that we can continue you know, to work with the kids in the, in the future. Thank you. I also would like to applaud. I was looking at this when I first got here, and I think that's amazing all the garbage they picked up. And hopefully, if they keep working, we get this number lower. But I, I applaud anybody that's doing that type of work. Thank you very much. Councilman Fleming, do you have any comments before we move into the public comment portion, and it is a public comment portion, not a question and answer session, I just want to remind everybody that we're here to conduct the, the business of the city by virtue of the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 4 6. That business must be conducted in a public forum. However, there are certain exceptions, one being cited in NJSA 10 4 12 and referring to collective bargaining agreement or the terms and conditions which are proposed for inclusion in any collective bargaining agreement, including the negotiation of terms and conditions thereof with employees or representative of employees in a public body. That is not something that we conduct in, in a public forum. It is one of the exceptions to the Open Public Meeting Act. That being said, you're allowed to make your comments, but that is why we do not respond to anything relative to those comments. I'll now open up the floor for public comment. I can have the first speaker. You have five minutes. Harry, Harry Nichols, Avenue. Uh, of course, I work for a DPW in Brunswick. Uh, I've been here before and I'm back again, of course. With everything that's been going on, I had to come down here again to support my shop steward and speak again on the things that has been going on, the things that we've been dealing with. Uh, we're still waiting for our hazard pay because we're out there doing COVID day in and day out every day. And as the other towns have gotten their hazard pay, we haven't gotten our hazard pay yet. But well, we earned it, we worked for it, we want it. When you want something, you work for it. That's the same, right? So we worked for it, we want it. We haven't gotten it. We haven't heard a thing about it. And outside of that, as far as I'm concerned, there's only been excuses. And we deserve it because we worked for it and we earned it. And we worked harder than any other town around here, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt. Second of all, on top of that, I would like to also speak on the fact that because of the things that's been going on, a lot of problems been happening down at the yard. On, uh, with say unsafe equipment still, uh, behind the scenes, whatever negotiations you all have going on and talk about behind the scenes, I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, it hasn't made an impact, it hasn't made a change with anything. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's just been a lot of talk. 
uh, because I like to see action, just like you expect us to get out there and do our job day in, day out, week in, week out, in, uh, compared to the other towns, which we have been actually meeting with and talking to, you know, uh, from East Brunswick to North Brunswick to Edison to Sayreville to Plainfield. Uh, they are compensated much better than we are. They, they pick up one third of the, the, the sanitation, uh, ball pickups, scrap, whatever. In total, if you just say the garbage alone, they pick up one third of what we pick up. We ask them, what is your load like on an average day? And on an average day, they tell us anywhere from eight to 15 tons. Now ask us what we pick up on a daily basis. On a Monday and Tuesday, which is our heaviest days of the week, and I work on the biggest route. So I'm going to tell you what we pick up, and, and as well as the other trucks. Monday, we picked up about 35 tons of garbage. 35 tons. That's more than double what the surrounding towns pick up. Tuesday, we picked up about 35 tons of garbage, if not a little bit more. I see the dump slips because I'm on a truck. I go to the dump to dump the truck. And we're not compensated for it. We told the supervisor in Sayreville and the director that we pick up 35 tons of garbage on an average day, 20 tons on, 25 tons, 20 to 25 tons on a Thursday and Friday, sometimes 30. And on Monday and Tuesday, we pick up over 30 tons of garbage. If we have a double day, we pick up over 40 tons of garbage, upwards of 50 tons of garbage. We go to the dump two and three times a day, which we did on Monday and Tuesday, and still have garbage in the truck for the following day. And he couldn't believe it. His response was, "This, that's, that's impossible. You know why he said it's impossible? Because there's only two guys in the back of the truck with a driver throwing all of that garbage. And their guys, they, they, they don't pick up near what we pick up. Second of all, just recently, when, we, when a lot of people were out of work on vacation, et cetera, they had to bring in children. I was here. Because, see, I came in because I like to know what's going on. So even though others were off, I was here on that Monday and Tuesday after the holiday. And they had children on my truck, 15 and 16 years old, on my truck with me, with me showing them how to throw garbage and how to work the handles on the back of a truck. One of the children almost fell off of my truck because they should not be on the back of a garbage truck driving down the street at 35 and 40 miles an hour. I wonder if their parents knew that they were on the back of garbage trucks for a whole day burnt out. I had to give the children money to go and buy them drinks and food to eat. Did their parents even know that they were on the back of garbage trucks throwing garbage all day, sweating and, and burning up out there? No, I doubt that their parents knew they were on the back of garbage trucks, hanging on garbage truck going 40 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour. And it's just unacceptable. And the reason being is because the right thing is not being done. The pay is not being given. And the other towns, we ask how much you make. Oh, our bad guys make $31 an hour. Oh, our drivers make $34 an hour. Or in another town, oh, our bad guys, they're starting with you know, $23 an hour. Oh, our, 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 our drivers are, are starting with $52,000 an hour. And so on and so forth from town to town, including Plainfield. So it's just not right. And they do one third of what we do and we're still getting hammered out here day in and day out and we're not being respected or appreciated for it. And there's all these excuses. Correct it. Tired of it. Next speaker, please. <clears throat> Next speaker. My name is Joseph Dees. I'm from Public Works. I have questions. And I really don't understand, you know, this whole situation. To me, A plus A equals B. That's the way I see it. Um, as my coworker said, these, this garbage, this, this, this sanitation, this, this, this whole thing, it's been overwhelming, okay? Um, there's a, I got, a, if you've got some information, that now that the town, now that the city is recognized because of things that are being exposed, there's a situation that's going on with the dump on Jersey Avenue. Whereas the papers are being doctored. We go in there with 18 tons, 
we come out, oh, it's 10. Mind you, we take a picture of the scale that's in front of us when we go in. We come out and go back on that scale, totally different, 10 tons, eight tons, which is crap. Because we're out there every day. We know the difference. We read the math. We're not stupid. So somewhere down the line, someone is covering up something. In order to cover your butts, you're covering up something to make us look like what we're saying is a lie. Are you talking about the scale at the, at the yard or the public works yard or the scale that's out over at by the Delco Battery? So the, scale, the scale by, um, by Delco Battery. Okay. We have paper. We have the, the receipts. Is that right? Yes. We have the receipts. Okay. When we go in and when we come out. We also have cell phones. Okay, so someone's trying to cover themselves. Things are being happening in this town and it's allowed. Some, some towns are restricted. Some town New Brunswick is not. That's not cool. Some town New Brunswick is not restricted. Whatever goes, goes. What would you want us to do double days, extreme days? You want this stuff picked up. I bet you none of you would do it. We had the parts division, division come up and do it. They couldn't handle it. They stopped half day because it was that much. Now just imagine the ones who do it every single day. And they can handle it. So why would you put that on us like something's wrong with us? It's not great. It's not great. It's not right. Something needs to be done. And I was told that we don't deserve hazard pay. Why? It was told to us that whatever I decide to do with the grant that is given, the money that is given, is what we decide to do. That's what we were told. How would you feel if that someone would have told you that? I don't have to give you no money. I don't have to give you what's due to you. I can do what I want with it, even if they owe you. Y'all wouldn't like it. Y'all wouldn't like it at all. So I don't see why it's such an issue when we come down to express what we think and what we feel, and then we're being harassed because we do. Thank you for your comments, sir. We'll have the next speaker. That's what you do? This is public comment portion, and I just did cite part of the law that we do not speak about collective bargaining issues. The council is not party to those contracts. We get them after for approval once the negotiation is Excuse. Happened. What? No, that's, that is the process. Lies, lies. Hi, yes, Danielle Moore. I would like to, I will get to all of my enemies soon, but I do have to say, I know I do have a new enemy now, but maybe I'd explain to you, Miss Aaron. Excuse me, Miss Aaron, due to where, I don't know who you think you are telling the workers that they're not allowed to be around me or talk to me. Please ask your buddy, Mr. Cr Charlie Criderville, what happens to evil eyes that, like I said, start spreading things about me? Were you calling workers, telling them? Please, it, stop interrupting because, like I said, you're going to have your day. I can, I, I'm talking, I can look anywhere, but like I said, please tell me, tell your buddy, Mr. Charlie.
child cried and tell her do to wear what? What evil eyes have that day? What did Dr. Caldwell say to you when you saw him the other day? Oh, this woman put a curse on me. No, I did not. Every evil eye has their day. And like I said, where you keep telling workers they don't belong to me, but I'll get to you another day and something else as well. But I will say my prayers. I try to be, I have a good heart. I try to stay calm, think of, ooh, go to the words from wake up everybody. Ooh, no matter what, race created color, we need each other. The words from we are the world, we are all God's great big family, but with all you racist and hatred, you will have your evil eye day, and I will say my prayers that each and one of you rot in hell. Well, you you're out of order. well good, I will be out of order all, all, all that day. Like that, well good, whatever, I will say, say you, you be one of them, to Suzanne Sikor and loving Mr. Shanley. Are you threatening again? Keep, keep saying that I'm threatening, and every time you say, you say, I'm, I'm not threatening you. Like I said, the Lord's gonna take care of you. And like I said, for good judges, you really gonna pull this, like I said, like I said, the Lord is eating you away. I didn't threaten you, and stop saying that I'm threatening you. You not be able to conduct yourself in a professional manner. I'm not, I stop interrupting, saying that I'm threatening you, but I was, like I said, this is a bull every time with her. You will rot in hell, Sudan, to court love me, like I said. Let the Lord eat please. your ass away. Please remove her from the room. I, I didn't write that. I'll have the next speaker. Please, please say your name. I'm Brittany Richardson, Livingston Avenue. Once again, I am with the Department of Public Waste, unfortunately. So um, once again, we hear you guys keep bringing up the bargaining system because you don't really have the answers. The bargaining system, we do understand it's a contract. We are not illiterate. We know that we are supposed to go to the union to take care of things. So let's be frank. You guys have broken that contract years ago, even before I started working here. You do not follow the contract. So what contract do we follow? You have not given these people the raises that, that you're supposed to. Bitch, what happened today? You have sure that's noted on the record. You have not followed the raises and things that were going on. In that contract, you do not follow the safety rules, so on and so forth with that contract. That's why we do not feel the need to follow the rules. You guys make the rules, you break the rules, but if we do it, it's not appropriate. So let's talk about this great summer <coughs> program with these children that you brought up. Okay, so let's talk about how July 4th, we are city workers, we do not work July 4th. So the following two days, Workers were using their days to stay home because it was going to be extremely hot. And you know, we're working in trucks with no air conditioners. Some of them have no fans. So a day like today, where it's 99 degree weather, we're out there working with hot trucks, hot garbage, bugs, whatever the case may be. But you don't care, that's neither here nor there. We still have to pick the garbage up. So a lot of people were off of work. For some reason, I'm getting these harassment calls saying that I'm supposedly doing some sort of strike. Please keep my name out of that. I do not know what's going on. I just know that I wasn't going to be there. My supervisors and directors have known in advance that I was not going to be there. I'm not sure what was going on. But what I did see on my off day is children that are not the age of 18. They do not have any experience throwing garbage. They did not have the proper safety equipment. Probably never even worked the hopper, which is the rear section of the garbage truck in their lives on the back of the garbage truck literally about to fly off because they don't know how to properly hold on the truck and you guys are paying them what $13 an hour to pick up garbage that normally you would pay adults to pick up for more money not to mention it was double the garbage because the holiday we don't pick up garbage but the program is just so great I don't understand that you use those kids, but you didn't tell their parents they were out there on a double day picking up that garbage, and we're dealing with feces, we're dealing with urine, we're dealing with high drug areas, needles in the garbage, and you can only imagine what else in that garbage. Blood, all types of things. Anything that I say, I mean, you know, I have proof. I don't just say anything about just random things. I have proof. So when you guys are going behind my back and saying little things to ask questions of my coworkers or my superiors, everything comes back to me and I feel really harassed and discriminated against. And that's fine because um, whatever you want to come at me with, I'm prepared for. Trust me. Whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. That is not a threat. It's just I've been preparing for this day. 
Because when I tried to do the bargaining process and follow the chain of command and try to get you guys to settle these issues behind closed doors, you guys didn't want to do that. You didn't respect what I was saying. It was just like, oh, we'll look into it. And you never looked into it. So I had to take drastic measures for you to see that these things are still to this day going on. Nothing's being done. We were out there today in 100 degree weather with lots of garbage. Lots, there's four routes. So if one of these guys are telling you they picked up 35 tons, that's only one truck. With two guys on the back and a driver. You guys wouldn't have your kids out there or your family out there doing that. Yeah, we know what we signed up for, but we were just pretty much asking for your help to regulate that garbage, and you do not. You, you don't have any money to pay us, but we're seeing you hiring new inspectors and hiring new, these new people. I'm buying trucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, that we don't even, like, what is the money going to? I'm not really sure what it is, because these trucks are ancient. The police are riding around in brand new cars. Everybody's riding around in these brand new work cars and vehicles. And I'm not mad with the police. They, they do their thing. But what I'm saying is, is they need the proper equipment. So do we. We work in the same city. Why don't we deserve that? Thank you, Christina, for coming in. You're my hero. This is the lady I showed you that was in a coma for six months because you didn't care about sanitation getting COVID-19. It was spreading around, and it was still happening the last meeting that I told you about. She almost lost her life, and she lost her child just like I lost my child. And like I said, it's either you guys are gonna pay what you're supposed to so I can go ahead on about my business and you can keep your job, or I will continue to come down here however long it takes. I don't care about your bargaining system. You didn't care about our bargaining system. We don't care about yours. Thank you. I'll have the next speaker, please. Yeah, I just wanna say something real quick. Yeah, Carmen, what the kids? And I don't take um, anything away from my day, but my husband, but I will talk from personal experience. I was with the kids myself cleaning the streets, those 19, and the kids have proper equipment. I'm not talking about what happened. And yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I, I was there, and I have seen it. They had equipment. I was there, we were there for three hours with our kids doing it. And I think that, and the reason why I have a program, and, and this is not something that uh, I understand. I'm not taking away anything from what you're saying, but I just want to clarify that the kids that I work with, including the teenager patrol, at least yesterday, when I worked with them, we don't have the equipment. And the kids were utilizing the kicks, they had gloves, no, they were they had gloves. Our, our kids, again, I was there and I was doing it myself. So it was complimentary. So, but I'm telling you my experience yesterday from 11. We're not talking about this. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I understand. I respect right. it. I listen to you. Right. But I'm just trying to clear out because you mentioned that the kids didn't have equipment. I didn't see that. I spent, well, I'm not taking, I'm not saying whether it's true or not. I'm just saying that my experience was that the kids have equipment. I spoke to the teenager patrol kids and they were fine. They did say that in some days they're hot and they're out there. I said, well, that's why it takes. It's, it's not an easy job. And parents knew what they were signing for, um, as far as I know. And because the same, I have a different group of kids. That I don't know, and I'm going to find out when I hear about that. I have a report, so if you want to see it. Again, I, I just want to find out about what happened, because that does worry me, that there's some kids hanging out in a garbage truck. Yes. I want to hear about that. All day, I'll that. See you. All day. And, I'll see you. But um, other than that, I just want to be clear, clear that yesterday when I worked with the kids, and another 20 additional kids from another program, they will have the right equipment. And I was doing the cleanup with them. So it's not that I was in my car sitting down, or I was walking the streets with them and cleaning myself. So I just wanted to make sure. We have about that's six of them. Thank you, Councilor. I'll have the next speaker, please. Good evening once again, Charles Pratt New Brunswick, New Brunswick Today, and candidate for mayor of New Brunswick. I want to thank the council for resolution 072248, approving a street closure. Uh, with your support, we're bringing National Night Out back to Townsend Street, and uh, want to just say that all are welcome. We want everybody in the community to feel welcome and to join us for a nice block party. We hope the city council will join us if your schedule allows. Um, I also want to say that I stand with the city workers, yes. and I think that uh, everybody who makes this city run deserves to be treated with respect and you know, ultimately deserves fair compensation for their work. I know uh, the mayor is on the record supporting $15 minimum wage, but 
apparently not practicing what he preaches because not everybody on the city payroll is being paid that at this time. And uh, you know, I certainly think that anybody who's doing the essential work uh, as the DPW folks are does deserve hazard pay. Um, this you know past two plus years has been uh, horrendous and really risky for uh, public workers who we depend on to uh, keep the city safe and clean. And I think that um, you know there's disparate treatment between certain departments. Uh, you know, getting compensated, and uh, I think that needs to be addressed. And I, I do want to note that there's nothing stopping you from addressing it in these meetings. Uh, yes, if you choose to have a closed session to discuss personnel matters, that's your right. But you can also, uh, you know, should you choose, respond to questions or uh, comments that are made at this microphone. And I would venture to say it would be the right thing to do, to respond and give your thoughts. Um, you know, some of the things that have been brought up here have merited an investigation. The city's hired an attorney to look into some of these claims, and I think that, you know, the, the, the public deserves answers. So I hope that you can share with us at a future meeting what this investigation has found and what you're going to do in response to it. Um, I do want to uh, speak about the mayor. Um, I know that we have a lot of problems in this city, including the increasing unaffordability for residents to stay here, and a really severe uptick in violent crime. I'll note that the mayor has not held a press conference since 2011, more than a decade. Wow. He has not attended a city council meeting since 2012, just over a decade. He has not given a state of the city address since 2019. And so last night, I took a trip to see the mayor at his other job, uh, where he works as the redevelopment attorney for Milltown, and tried to ask him why people need to come to Milltown to speak to the mayor of New Brunswick. And as you can imagine, it didn't go very well. But I want to, uh, you know, I want to establish that, you know, the mayor works for us. We are the public, and we deserve answers from all of our elected officials. And we deserve access to all of our elected officials. So maybe the mayor doesn't like my questions. Maybe he doesn't like that I have gotten involved in politics. But he still works for me and every other one of the 55,000 residents of this city. And his attitude last night was really problematic. He told me he will never talk to me. And I don't think that's the way any elected official should behave. I will say that his reason for not talking to me was that he said my facts are wrong. Rather than pointing out any facts or setting me straight and telling me what I got wrong and, and, and you know what the true story is, he just said, I'm never going to talk to you because your facts are wrong. And I know I've brought this up before. We started the New Brunswick Today newspaper to enlighten the community, educate the community, and share important stories like the stories that get told on this microphone and the stories that you have to share as well. And I have in the past you know, gotten that kind of criticism like, you're wrong, your stories are wrong, your facts are wrong. But I always have to push back and say, well, what specifically is wrong? Because if we got something wrong, we want, to, we want to correct it. We want to get the truth out there. So I will give all of you an opportunity right now, if there's anything we've ever gotten wrong or any facts that I've gotten wrong on this microphone or, 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 or in speaking to you uh, in person or on the phone or anything like that, if there's ever anything that I got wrong, I'd like you to tell me. And I'd also encourage the mayor to tell me what he thinks we got wrong. I know I brought this up before, Mr. Egan was the council president, and he said uh, we spelled his name wrong one time, and it's true, and we corrected it very quickly, but was there anything substantive we've ever got wrong? Is there anything we need to correct? Thank you for your comments, Mr. Cragmore. Does any other member of the public wish to speak? It's one time up, sorry. Oh, it's one time up. Does any other member of the public wish to speak? Good evening again. I'm still Linda Stork. I'm going to start by saying that I think it's a travesty what's happening with the Department of Public Works. Um, 
adding on to the travesty of what's happening with affordable housing in this town. And uh, it's just, it kind of boggles the mind, actually, you know, that they would be sending, well, I don't even want to go to the kids. And yeah, I would imagine they wouldn't have kids hanging off the trucks with council members present, but apparently this is what went on. I wasn't harassing you. That's no, no, I know. I understand that. Because of course not. Um, you know, this was a different time. This was a different event. And I wasn't and, was a council person. I was the I was a representative of council. Just totally exactly, different. but everybody knows who you are. They aren't going to do questionable things in front of you if they can help it. But, but that's that's bad. Because if I if I knew my kid was going out to pick up garbage, I would say great. But if I found out he was hanging off the back of a truck without proper equipment and proper training, oh no. That's the kind of stuff um, young boys go out and do in making their mothers lose sleep. That's the kind of stuff they go out and do on their own, bad enough. Hanging off cars and stupid stuff like that. No, absolutely not. So, and it's all well and good to have volunteers in general, you know, taking, you know, take caring about their city and pitching in. Um, you know, I've, I've been um, trying to help out at Bucalo Park, but at the same time, I am not going to do things that are the jobs of uh, the park workers that they're short staffed and so there's a lot not getting on the parts are dirty and I can't believe they sent the parks people over to back up DPW. It's not like the parks are done. Right. Look around Dupelo Park. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, and the bathrooms aren't even open. And there's garbage everywhere. I've gone a couple times when PlaySafe was getting ready to start and garbage. One time I saw the garbage that I had brought some kids over there to play on the previous Friday and I saw the same litter all around the picnic table but we had put our stuff on Friday, and I, that's why I noticed what kind of garbage was around there. And that same garbage was there the next week by the pavilion there, where Play Safe is, and the and the little uh, portage on that all those kids in Play Safe have to use now. So it's not like they have enough. And they said, you know, so they they can't get their own thing. Instead, why don't we just get enough people? Yes, you would have to pay more. You know, obviously, but everybody deserves more. And to and to and to talk about the hazard pay in conjunction with traffic, with contract negotiations, which are private and can't be discussed in public. But that hazard pay from COVID, no, that's that's not. They should they shouldn't have to litigate that in their contract. That's something they should already have Cheers. because they already did that work and it was extra money that came in for COVID at the discretion of the city to distribute and for the attitude to be, well, we don't have to give it to you. <laughs> I, just, I just can't even imagine. With the job they do, the work they do, and the lack of respect that they get and, and uh, I, and then to be sending people for one department that's already understaffed and not getting their own work done over to try and, and, and the kids, it's just. And I originally had wanted to say something about the, the lack of affordable housing. So the 700 and something units, biggest housing development in what? New Brunswick history? I don't even know. Gets approved, third try. Second try in a week. <laughs> gets, it, gets approved with zero affordable housing. We're not talking low income. Zero affordable, 100%, let's put it like this. If it's zero affor uh, affordable, then obviously it's 100% unaffordable housing. With the shortage and the need that we have in this community for affordable housing, how can that even be? And, 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 when, and when can the units that they made the payment for be expected to show up and where? Thank you for your comments, Mr. Does any other member of the public wish to speak? Yes, I have a question. 
based on what you just told me, okay? You said only one question, one time you're supposed to then and give your not, not question, presentation. Not question, one time I'll give, Okay, now, I was here three times yes. before, and each time, I was, I was saying. oh, each time, I saw the same people getting up, presenting their case. And I will, I will, I will. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not done. Okay. I'm not done. I saw three people get up and give their, what they feel okay. on different occasions, different times, same people. Absolutely. Okay? But you're telling me that I can't say anything right now. No, I said they, they, there are Why is that? Because there are different pieces of the meeting. You're no, right. it was the same. You're allowed to. It no, was the never, same. Never. You're allowed it was, to. No, no, Please no, miss. You're allowed you're, to. You are very informed. Not, not informed. I would like you to are know. very not informed. You're, you're not informed. It was, no, no, miss. Miss, I've seen it. I watched it. I would like to see it too because no one. I've seen it. I watched it. In any section okay? of the And for you to say to me that I can't say anything, something's wrong with that. That's not what I said. Something's there really are, wrong with that. There are three okay? versions it was, of It was allowed. Excuse me. It's allowed. Excuse Anybody, anyone is allowed to say anything they feel like they want to say, but you're going to shut me down. That's not what happened here, sir. That's exactly what happened. No, it is not. And That's exactly what happened. You're not listening. One time. You no. told me one time. Absolutely. And every, and any one person. But it doesn't go, it doesn't go for anyone yes, else. It doesn't. It applies, one time. It applies That's to That's what you said to me. One time. One time during the public comment. Absolutely. It's noted. Yeah, it should be noted. That's it's noted. It should one be time. You said one time. It should be noted. Now watch. Be prepared that it's going to happen again. Okay. And when it happens again, you're going to see. And I'm going to and I'll remind you. Okay, you can remind me, but I just want to be very clear. There are certain, there are three different portions of the meeting where people can come up and speak at all three portions of the meeting for five minutes each time during. You have the opportunity to speak on ordinances. You can come up and speak once for one time only on ordinances. On second reading, you can come up and you can speak again on the resolutions one time for five minutes only. And then you have the opportunity, again, to come up during the public comment portion to speak for one time, five minutes only. When did you decide this? Okay. Okay. I would just like to say no. one thing. If there's more than one ordinance, you can speak you can on speak every on ordinance. Each, on each ordinance. This has been the process for, barring a difference in time, it has been the process for as long as I know. Since the 1970s. Yeah, well, we, we, under, we apologize. It's just a lot to try to tell you that's right. been going on in just five minutes, especially when you've been to other meetings where we watched you let, for example, the lawyer with the, the gala bar, he talked for almost an hour with no interruptions, repeating himself, which is on record, and now he didn't say anything. But I understand that may have been a different situation, but right. it is a lot to try to and I, and I understand. And I understand minutes. that too, but in that instance when the attorney was here, it was a public hearing right. and that's the difference in that we're not trying to play games with the time that we give everybody these are these are processes that we've had in place for forever I mean like Mr. Sham says since the 70s so we're not this is not something we're changing today it's something we've, we've always done like I said barring the exception of the amount of time and at one point I think it was three minutes sometimes there was no time limit sometimes and now it's a five minute limit but that is why you see people come up to the microphone the same person may come up three or four times during a meeting, depending on how many ordinances we have, then again to speak on the resolutions, and then again to come up for public comment. So that is how it is. So yes, you will sir, see people come up numerous times, but not more than once in any given portion of the meeting. Well, you and I just wanted to explain that. And I'll have the next speaker, please. We're trying to keep our sanity, and you want to push us Is there another the speaker? Edge. Is there any more public please comment? Please don't push us to that edge. Seeing none. Who's your second? Councilmember Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Egan. Yes. Councilmember Fleming. Yes. Council Vice President Escobar. Yes. Council President Escobar. Yes. 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 yes.